Odd But True presents 10 Bizarre Baby Behaviours Explained Babies are a lot like little alcoholic hobos. They're noisy, they throw up a lot, nobody wants to sit near them on the bus, and we've all been one once in our lives. But babies also have a whole heap of weird and wacky behaviours that most new parents just aren't prepared for. Why are babies so messy? What's with the fake coughing? And what is the secret untold story behind Peekaboo? Let's find out in this list of 10 Bizarre Baby Behaviours Explained. Number 1. Why are babies so lazy? When a baby horse pops out of mama horse, it takes only a few hours to stand up on its legs. Same goes for a newborn cow, a newborn kangaroo, and many other newborn animals. Fish too are all capable of swimming as soon as they leave their egg sacs. Heck, if you've seen our video on the weirdest mating rituals, you'll know that the anglerfish have to mate as soon as they enter the world. And human babies? They can't do squat. They can't walk, they can't dance, they can't hold down a steady job. Why is that? Why do you suck at everything when you're a baby? Well, there are many reasons. First of all, walking on four legs and swimming in the ocean are both much simpler movements than walking on two legs. Bipedal movement requires more highly developed motor skills, which is why babies crawl before they can walk. Also, remember that most animals need to learn to walk and swim to survive. Babies don't, they hang around mom for years after birth. But in exchange for this longer period of childhood, children are then able to absorb more social skills early on. And finally, the reason which will make you the most squeamish is simply down to the size of the baby's head. Compared to other animals, the human brain is huge, but no mother could survive popping out a kid whose brain and head was developed enough to be able to walk, because I guarantee you, the mother certainly wouldn't be walking after that. It would most likely kill her. So, there you have it. Sure, babies aren't as good as horses when they're first born, but ten years later, who's riding who? Number 2. What's up with Peekaboo? Ever tried playing peekaboo with a six-month-old kid? They damn well love it. Ever tried playing peekaboo with a 16-year-old kid? Not as much fun. It usually ends with someone calling the cops, especially if that kid is a stranger. But there's a very good reason why babies are so entertained by a game of peekaboo, and it has nothing to do with those cutesy noises you make every time you play. At about six months old, babies begin to develop a greater understanding of the world around them. Obviously, at such a young age, they don't have the capacity to grasp such complex ideas as gravity or the rules to monopoly. But what they do start to understand is the idea of object permanence, which is the realisation that things will continue to exist even if you can't see it. So, by playing peekaboo, you're helping the baby to realise that you haven't disappeared off the face of the earth just because you hid behind your hands for a few seconds. This idea also comes into play when playing Got Your Nose. So be careful, because depending on what age you first play this with baby, they may actually think you've genuinely torn off part of their face, you cruel inhuman monster. Number 3. When sit hits the fan. At around 9 or 10 months of age, you might hear your baby crying one night and walk into the room to discover something very strange indeed. Your baby is stood up for the first time. Oh great! But they can't get back down again. Not great. Like a cat stuck up a tree, babies are often curious about scaling new heights. So early on, they'll use fixed objects to hold themselves up onto their feet. But since all of this is new territory, they haven't really thought through the next part, i.e. sitting down. Bending your knees and landing perfectly on your butt is something many of us take for granted, as we should. It's pretty damn easy. But for a baby who's never done it before, it's no easy task. You can of course help your baby down from these lofty heights if you wish, but eventually they're going to have to learn for themselves and after falling onto their face and collapsing sideways, eventually they'll figure out the right way to slam down those cheeks and take a load off. Number 4. Coughing on again. Every parent of a newborn is paranoid and overprotective at first. With the slightest hint of a symptom, you rush straight to Dr. Google to find out which tropical disease your baby has today. But one common baby symptom may have more to it than initially meets the eye. You'll be tending to your chores in another room and suddenly hear your kid cough, so you'll rush over to see what baby's put in their mouth today. Oh, there's nothing there, it's just a random cough. No big deal. So you leave the room, and baby coughs again. You take another look. Baby smiles. Hmm. Has baby taken up smoking? Then baby coughs again, and this time it sounds a little too overdramatic. What is going on here? Why are they faking? Well, at around six months of age, babies begin to notice the impact of their own actions. Whenever they've had a genuine cough, they'll notice that you come rushing in. So, if baby wants attention, all they have to do is cough. Not only is this behaviour a crucial part of social development, it's also going to come in really handy in 10 years time when they want to bunk off school. Number 5. BAM! You're awake. 
every parent loves to watch their baby sleeping peacefully until suddenly kapow your baby just bursts into life like something out of a really cutesy horror movie their arms spread outward their legs kick down and the most inhuman guttural screams start bellowing from their mouths what gives baby how can you just startle yourself awake like that well these sudden awakenings are called the morrow reflex and it happens when a child's arms and legs move too quickly while they're asleep the baby suddenly feels like it's falling, and understandably, that's not something most babies enjoy. Well, maybe little baby Felix Baumgartner, but I bet he wasn't like most babies. This reaction is perfectly normal, and it isn't too dissimilar to the reaction adult humans have when they experience a similar feeling of falling in their sleep. Moral reflex is believed to have its roots in an evolutionary trait which helped infants cling to their mother while she carried them around, because in ye olden times when baby and baby mama were hairy hairy monkeys, there was no such thing as a baby backpack. Number six, there's something missing. Everyone hates a crying baby. Whether you're sat behind one on an airplane, eating a nice meal in a fancy restaurant, or you're racing babies in your backyard and one of them has fallen off its tiny baby chariot. Baby cries are irritating as hell because neither the parent nor anyone else on the planet knows how to make them stop. But have you ever noticed something missing when a little baby starts wailing? If not, you will now, because when babies first learn to cry, they do not shed tears. Newborns do have fully working tear ducts and glands to produce those salty little raindrops, but in the first few months you'll see plenty of dry cries as your baby only has enough in the tank to lubricate its eyes. Gradually, as the baby's glands develop, they'll gain the ability to cry with actual tears. And then, not only will your unhappy baby be noisy, they'll also be all soggy in the face. Great. Number seven little baby metalhead. There are some babies who, as soon as you place them in a high chair or swing, will start rocking their head back and forth like they're in the front row of a Metallica gig. But don't go bulk buying those black metal onesies just yet because this behaviour has nothing to do with how metal your kid is going to be. At around 9-10 to 10 months old, some babies, mostly boys, will start rocking, bobbing or banging their heads on things as a response to different situations. It could be due to some form of pain, it could be helping them get to sleep, or even just a simple way of releasing energy and stress from the day. Us adults have stress balls and a glass of cognac, whereas babies, they just rock back and forth. That sounds pretty fun to me. Number 8. Little Baby Blues when you're a kid and someone does something you don't like, you might have a tantrum or stum off to your room, but babies use a much more evil form of emotional blackmail. If infants don't like something you're doing, then they might not cry, they might not lash out with their hands. What they might do is just think, okay, bored of this, time for baby to play dead, and hold their breath until they pass out. Approximately one in five kids aged between six months and four years old will hold their breath on purpose out of anger, pain, or frustration. And whilst this is obviously really scary for the parents, it isn't something you should be worried about unless it seems involuntary. Humans have an automatic backup system which will kick in and make your baby breathe if it's just jerking around for attention. And if nothing else, it at least gives you a bit of a rest from all that crying. So, fill your boots, Mr. No Breath. I can wait all day. Number 9. Eye Eye? If your baby's eyes make it look like it's looking in two different directions, you may wonder what the hell is going on. Is this a permanent thing? Does my child forever look weird? Are they doing this on purpose? Is my baby drunk? The answers are no, 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 and hopefully not. Crossed eyes are a common feature in newborns because the eye muscles are still developing and your baby is learning how to use them. Babies are also born with extra folds in the inner corners of their eyes, which further contributes to this crazy baby look. But as babies grow, these folds disappear and your kid starts to gradually appear less and less deranged, which is a good thing. By the time baby hits three months, their eyes will often correct themselves. By four months, their eyes should be able to follow objects. And by 12 months, their eyes should be just about ready to scowl at you for serving up veggies. And finally, number 10, messy meal times. Give a baby a plate full of mashed bananas and statistically, you'll end up with about 20% in baby's mouth, 12% around the mouth, 8% on their clothes, 6% in their hair, 10% in your hair, and the remainder you'll find down the back of the radiator in about 6 months time. Babies love to make a mess, but surely there can't be any genuine reason behind this. Aren't they just behaving like little goofy spazzes? No, because when baby makes a mess, it's actually trying to discover and learn about tastes and textures. Babies exhibit the same behaviour at messy mealtimes as they do playing outside in the dirt, splashing about in the bath, or randomly slapping you in the face. They have no idea of the context or consequences of their behaviour. So they just do it to find out what happens. How does this feel? What does this do? Hmm, this is brown. I bet it tastes good. No, I was wrong. Let's taste another brown thing. No, this is horrible too. So the next time baby smears ravioli sauce all over your favourite sweater, 
don't get angry, because Baby is just doing their homework. And there you have it. Those were the top 10 bizarre baby behaviours explained. Do you buy these explanations? Do they seem scientifically accurate? Or was this all just typical baby propaganda? There are lots of 